Alrighty folks, James Cards FC here. Thanks for clicking on today's video. So I wanted to do a quick review video of what these match-worn, player-worn, non-game specific patches actually mean in terms of the language that's used on the back of the card for all these patches. Um, I did a video a while back on autographs, the difference between stickers and on-card. And so today I wanted to do sort of a follow-up on that when we talk about patches, whether they're game-worn, match-worn, player-worn, not specifically worn by anything. So I wanted to do a review of all the different types that are out there, um, my own opinions on all the different ones, and sort of uh, what's going on in that end of the space. So this might be review for a lot of you that already know about this, but for those of you that aren't too familiar with patch cards and the ultra-modern side of the market like that, um, I wanted to put this video together for you, and hopefully you learned something. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. And I will move myself up there. Perfect. So let's talk about patch jersey or shirt cards, as they're called. So the first ever cards to feature a piece of a player's jersey was the Upper Deck 1997 baseball set. There is a picture of the card or one of the cards in the set right here. Just features a simple patch of the player's either jersey or um, pants based on the uh, pinstripe right there. So um, the purpose of this was to offer people with a new unique chase card uh, that had a piece of a gray worn jersey from the player that was featured on the card. Uh, so if you're trying to sell more baseball cards and base cards aren't really doing it, parallels are starting to come into the mix. And now you have this new invention of the patch card that features um, that next layer where you get actual piece of a game worn jersey. So really cool innovation there. Um, but as we move forward into the modern and ultra modern parts of the market, um, these have become a staple of the hobby. They're no longer rare. They're in pretty much every single set. So Many of the most expensive sets produced feature patch plus autographed cards as the main chase cards in the set, and many of a player's most expensive cards will be these patch autograph cards. However, as the production rate of patch cards has increased, actual game-worn patches are becoming less and less utilized. Today, I wanted to quickly review the main types of patch cards so uh, you understand what you're purchasing if you're going to buy one of these patch cards. So, uh, the three types are match-worn, player worn and then not from any specific match event or season and these are examples of all three um this one right here as we talked about before is match worn or game worn this lebron one right here is actually player worn from a photo shoot and this official match ball messy right here uh is not from any specific match event or season so um let's go ahead and talk about the first type which is match or game worn now in my opinion this is the best kind of patch card and not in my opinion it actually is the hardest to find especially in the modern or ultra modern era so the patch that's featured on the card was actually part of a player's kit that they wore during a real match this was not from a photo shoot this was not from an autograph signing they literally played in a match wearing this jersey or shorts or shoe or cleat or whatever you want to whatever the memorabilia is on the card it was used in a match what match it was used in we're not always sure futera sometimes tells you exactly what match it was used in but most of the time you're not sure you just know that it was used at least on the back of the card it will tell you it was used in a match so um in the last or sorry, in the late 90s and early 2000s, these were fairly common in the three major American sports, but for soccer, they can be pretty rare. And this is due to the fact that there's being less Americanized product in the late 90s and early 2000s, and the logistics issues in the modern and ultra-modern era are very tough for obtaining match-worn kits because the games are played in Europe and the Panini or Topps uh, production is happening in the United States. So getting those kits is, is really difficult and i'm sure the licensing is a lot more difficult to get them donated to them so from all those reasons it's really hard to get actual match worn stuff for soccer product in the modern era so here's examples of those match worn cards uh, i have the same 1997 upper deck one and then i have this ronaldo from flawless patch autograph and this patch right here if you look on the back of the card it will tell you the enclosed match worn material and autograph are guaranteed by panini america so this patch right here uh, was from either shorts or the shirt itself that ronaldo was wearing during a match what match we're not sure but according to panini this was used in an actual um match that was played so then we'll move on to the distant second kind of patch card, and this is player worn. So in my opinion, the distant second best kind of patch card, and they're much easier to find than match worn for obvious reasons. So uh, the patch that's featured on these cards are part of a kit that the player wore during a photo shoot, autograph signing, etc. We're not really sure. It's never specified, but we know the player wore it at some point. The event is usually not specified. 
Um, the issue with this is, of course, that players could be wearing kits on top of kits on top of kits during a 10-minute autograph signing, and these will all be considered player-worn patches. This is one of the most famous examples in the hobby. This is an American football player, Mark Ingram, uh, when he was a rookie for the Saints at the Topps or Panini um, premier photo shoot autograph signing thing. Um, he's literally wearing like 10 or 15 jerseys at the same time. He's wearing number 80. Uh, he never actually wears number 80. He wears 32 or something like that, but 80 makes bigger and better patches so he's probably wearing five to 15 number 80 saints jerseys and then he'll take these all off at the end of the signing and all of these will now be considered player worn and they will go into cards exactly like this in fact on the back of this card i didn't put it here it says it's from the rookie photo shoot so literally this patch right here is from part of the eight right there so um, in my opinion, not cool. Um, I would much rather have the match worn stuff, but I understand uh, that some people still like this. Just me personally, I, I can't really get excited about this knowing that the player probably just wore it for five or ten minutes and then took it off while also wearing a bunch of other jerseys while just signing a bunch of stickers. So, um, not interesting to me, but some people still really enjoy these. Um, here's an example of a soccer card. This Raphael Varane has a crazy Nike patch right here, but when you look on the back of the card, it says the enclosed player worn material and autograph are guaranteed by Panini America, which means um, it's it's possible that Varan just put on a bunch of uh, different kits while he was doing a signing, uh, and then they just took this from uh, one of those kits. This uh, Nike patch right here is not from a jersey that was used in a game. Otherwise, it would have said it was a match-worn or a game-worn material. It clearly does not. So this Nike patch right here is not from a match that Varan actually participated in, and it's much more likely this is either from a photo shoot or an autograph signing that Varan did with Panini. So when you see player-worn, think this. So uh, then we move into not from any specific match, event, or season. Um, these are by far the worst kind of patch card, in my opinion, and it's also the super easy to find and most popular one, and it dominates the 2019 to 2022 product era. So uh, the patch that's featured on these cards have no relation to the player on the card at all. They are not guaranteed to be from a match that the player was in. They are not guaranteed to be from a photo shoot or autograph signing that the player was at. They are not guaranteed to be from any specific year the player was active. So by the language given, it's 100% possible that these patches come straight from a sporting goods warehouse and are inserted into the card. So when you see this messy match ball right here where it says uh, literally on it official match ball, it is not an official match ball. This was not used in a match. Um, Messi never touched this. I don't think anyone ever touched this. I'm pretty sure this just came from a factory, got caught up, and was inserted into the card itself. Because if you look on the back right here, it says this the relic contained in this card is not from any specific match event or season Messi never touched it psg probably never touched it it probably went straight from a factory got cut up and put into the card at least in my opinion from the language that is given here um you'll see this all the time when you have crazy ultra modern patch cards like this lewandowski has an adidas logo has one of the stars from the Bayern logo and then it has um probably some sort of lettering patch um really really cool but then when you look at the back of the card the relic contained on this card is not from any specific match event or season so this jersey right here that was cut up and put on the card with this picture of Lewandowski. Lewandowski never touched this. Um, this probably just came from a factory, got caught up, and then put in the card. This, These patches right here have no connection to Lewandowski whatsoever. They're literally just put onto the card as sort of like an artwork design thing. Don't assume that these are worn at all. This is literally just for aesthetics and art. So these are more art pieces, at least in my opinion, that's kind of how you have to look at it as opposed to historical pieces because the player has no connection to the patches that are on the card. But if you're still into that, that's your choice. I just have absolutely no interest in any uh, of this, not from any specific match event or season type of patch. But if you're into the more artsy type of cards and you don't really care where the relic is from or the fact that it has no relation to the player, um, these cards are for you, I guess. It's just definitely not something I would be interested in at all. So uh, with that all being said, let's go to the conclusion here uh, where we're just going to say that there are clear differences between the different types of patch cards that are in the hobby and on the market. And as time goes on, I believe that it will be very difficult to obtain the actual match worn patch cards due to the production rarity in the 90s and 2000s since there wasn't a lot of soccer product, at least in the Americanized versions then, and the laziness of Tops and Panini in recent years. Tops and Panini have shown no interest recently in actually doing match worn patches. Maybe this changes when Fanatics take over, but at least for this current period of 2016 through 2022, there are almost no actual match-worn patch cards. They're all either player-worn from signings or photo shoots, or they're like the messy that I showed you previously, where it just has no relation to the player at all, and it could have been from a factory. So, um, with all, will the three levels of patches impact prices is probably the question that most people are interested in here. 
And currently, we don't really know the answer. Time is going to tell on this. Um, I show the example here. LeBron's most valuable rookie card features a player-worn patch from a photo shoot. So clearly, the market is currently still waiting to pay still willing to pay a premium for that type of patch. Um, this is LeBron's most expensive and probably most iconic card in the high-end sense. You have this patch right here, but if you look on the back of the card, um, it talks about how this is on the front of this card. It's an authentic piece of a patch from a jersey by LeBron James at a photo shoot. So this patch on his best card is not even game worn. Um, in my opinion, that makes it less valuable. I wouldn't be interested in purchasing this, but obviously I'm not in that end of the market anyway. So what does my opinion matter on something like that? Um, in any case, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, National Treasures rookie patch autographs in basketball also consistently sell for more than flawless, despite flawless including match-worn patches. Um, so we have to ask ourselves the following questions, which are, is this a market inefficiency, or is this displaying the power that brands like National Treasures have over others, or do high-end buyers not care about where the patch came from, or do they just not understand? Maybe Maybe the people buying this card never even knew that this was from a photo shoot and is not game worn. Maybe they don't care. Um, all that sort of stuff is still up in the air and time's going to tell over the years and years as we go throughout this market and this hobby. Perhaps things will change over time, but feel free to form your own opinions with the data that is out there and feel free to do your own research as well to see if you can find any um, big pricing discrepancies between the different types of patch cards. So uh, this video was just supposed to be informative, let you know what's out there, and I hope you guys uh, learned something. And in case you didn't, I hope you enjoyed your time spent here anyways. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I appreciate it. Feel free to leave a comment, um, like if you enjoyed the video, of course, and feel free to subscribe. I think we're uh, just past 800 subscribers, which is really, really cool. Uh, as we move into the World Cup, we'll try and hit that 1000 mark. And I definitely appreciate you guys for all the support. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I was getting uh, 19 views a video, and now we're going to start getting into those uh, four-digit numbers. So that's really cool. And I appreciate all the support, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.